the first paper that's due next week, I believe. All right, so if you go to our homepage, go to Assignments, and you'll see Paper 1, Close Reading and Analysis. And I'm going to pull up the Word doc so we can make a few notes on the paper. All right, so here we go. Paper 1, Close Reading Analysis. There's the due date. Uh, please upload a Microsoft Word or PDF only. And here are your instructions for uploading on Blackboard. Go on to Blackboard, click on Assignments, click on the assignment, upload a Word doc or PDF, and then hit Submit. Please do not email me your assignments. Uh, I put grades in through Blackboard. MLA format, and if you, if you want to look at MLA format, there are multiple videos uh, right here. MLA format, here's a whole video where this guy and welcome to this video you hear him? on how to format a paper. He walks you through how to format the paper. All right, so that's what I want you to do. Your name, my name, and you, you could just put Charles Kell. You don't have to put Professor or Dr. Kell, the class, the date. That's how the paper is format, double space throughout. All right, back to the assignment sheet. Uh. The papers were 200 points, so and, and we'll be on five areas: introduction and clarity of thesis statement, body paragraphs that follow meal guidelines. Uh, that's main idea, evidence analysis link, and if you go back to our site as well, back to our Blackboard site, there's writing resources that walk through uh, meal paragraphs. So please look at this. And I also include an example on our, on our handout. So these are meal paragraphs. Every body paragraph is going to start with a main idea topic sentence. One major thing Sonny and his brother struggles with is Sonny's addiction to drugs, right? Sonny's addiction to heroin. That gives you the idea. Then you're going to, the evidence, you're going to, for our paper, you're going to include a quote from the text. Analyze the quote, link it back to the thesis. That's what meal paragraphs are. <clears throat> uh, you, you, for the close reading paper, you know, for the literature class, you, you want, you're going to include a quote in each body paragraph. So this is, you know, if your paper doesn't have quotes, that's not good. So you see 50 points there. In each body paragraph, that's after the intro and before the conclusion, you're going to include at least one quote. Uh, the conclusions were 25, MLA format 25. For this assignment, you will write a two to three page close reading and analysis of one of the texts we have read so far. This could be Saving Sorty, Sonny's Blues, The Flowers, uh, The First Day, Romero's Shirt, That Room. Close reading is an exercise designed to foster detailed critical analysis in order to find patterns and generate interpretations in the text. You've been doing this so far with our discussion boards. That's been my whole plan with the discussion boards. You could take uh, what you've written there and use that as a jumping off point. When you analyze a text, you look at the significance of what has taken place. So instead of summarizing and saying what happens, that's, we're not doing that. This isn't a summary. Uh, you're looking for the importance of what happened. So, you know, and, and I'll, a lot of times when people first, writing about literature is difficult. Your audience is me. I've read all these stories hundreds of times. Please do not, do not, do not summarize, right? Don't summarize. Don't tell me what happened. I know what happened. Instead, instead of asking what happened, why is what happened important or, or how does what happened affect the characters? And here's what I'm talking about. For example, instead of a summary, Nee and Sorty work every day after school in the family restaurant. One night, a guy grabs Sorty and calls calls her a china doll, and then Nia stabs him with a fork. Don't do this. This is summary. Instead, the fact that Nia and Sorty work after school until late at night shows, you see how you're analyzing here, shows how their life center around work and just getting by. Nia also thinks that by stabbing the man, she is protecting Sorty. And Nia is upset when Ma not only comes to the customer's defense, but makes her apologize as well. As opposed to Nia's idea of America, this scene illustrates that in the real America, 
racism often goes unchecked and unpunished. This is analysis. You, you know, you're not saying what happened. You're analyzing what happened. Take a scene character moment in the story and show why the scene character moment is important. Or how do the actions affect the characters? Your paper should be structured with an introduction. You're jumping right into the paper. Uh, with the thesis statement coming somewhere toward the end of the first paragraph, the last sentence, you should follow with two to four body paragraphs, one point per paragraph that supports your thesis, follow the meal guidelines. At the end of your paper, you should have a conclusion not simply summarizing your paper, but pointing speaking to a larger issue or broader context. This is a very short paper, two or three pages, so I want you to focus on a few moments in the text that really speak to what you are talking about. Reread and look closely at these passages in order to support your thesis and make your paper meaningful. What not to do. Don't start your paper with something like, Saving Sorty is a story written by the author Mei Li Che. It's set in South Dakota. You know, don't give summary. Uh, and I've read the story. I know what it's about. Also, don't start your paper with broad platitudes expressing some general statement that has nothing to do with the story. The American dream is different for everybody. Life as an immigrant is hard. People struggle. Take one, you know, these are saying the obvious. We all know this. People must face adversity in order to change. Like, thanks for that wonderful insight. Tie, you can take a broad statement, but tie it specifically with whatever story you're talking about. So how does this connect to Saving Sorty, Sonny's Blues, The First Day, The Flowers, etc.? Instead, jump right into your paper. I think it was written in 2000. In, in May Lee Chase Saving Sortie, Nia's relationship with the American dream is both difficult and complicated, right? And we, I talked about this in the video where I don't think Nia thinks it's going to be like Beverly Hills 90210 where she's going to be sitting in a gold swimming pool sipping, you know, margaritas all day. But she thinks she could at least, you know, play soccer or, or, or engage in things that normal kids engage in, not work every day at the Silver Palace, right? So you're jumping right into the text. In James Baldwin's Sonny's Blues, the relationship between the brothers is complicated. Uh, in Edward P. Jones's The First Day, the mother is determined to get her daughter to school. You know, showcases, you see, May Lee Chase Saving Sorty showcases one family struggle to work and adapt to life as immigrants to the United States. This is taking one of those broad statements and really uh, making it specific to the story. Think about the themes we have been discussing so far, the American dream, work class communities. Ask yourself this question, in what text do some of our themes seem prevalent? Uh, the poem, if you want to look at Henri Cole's Oil and Steel, Describe the relationship between the, sp the speaker of the poem and the father. What in, the, in the poem indicates the nature of their relationship? Look at what is truly inherited from the father. What is it? How is it both helpful and sometimes harmful? How is work portrayed in the poem? Think about the work the speaker is doing, looking and dealing at with their relationship with the father. When we work on our relationships, this you know is a form of work. Uh, uh, again, for all these questions, you're not going to be able to answer all these. Your paper would be like 10 to 12 pages. Choose one or two of these ideas and talk about them. Saving sortie. Describe Nia's hopes, thoughts, and relationships to America. What does Nia mean when she says, I thought we'd find the real America? And again, I don't think Nia, I always find it funny when people say Nia's immature. She's 11 at the start. I don't know any 11, you know. Do you, do any of you know any 11 year olds who are like, yeah, that's just the way life is. We got to work every, you know, she's 11. She's hurt. She's acting her age. And I don't think Nia thinks it's all going to be like sunshine and rainbows, but she just thought she, Nia, I think Nia thinks like, damn, I thought I'd be able to, you know, do, do normal school stuff, kids stuff, not work every day. Look closely at Nia and Sorty's relationship. Why are they so close? Why does Nia want to save Sorty? Uh, and when and how does Nia try to save Sorty? Look at how memory haunts Mon Sorty. How has the past affected Mon Sorty in their lives in America? Why is Nia almost free from this trauma? Remember, Nia remembers nothing from Cambodia, uh, only from what Sorty has told her. How is working class intertwined and portrayed in the story? Again, 
you know, you're only going to choose one or two of these ideas. And I'll outline a couple of things at the end of this paper. Baldwin, Sonny's Blues. Describe the relationship between the narrator, narrator and Sonny. Why does the narrator feel responsible for Sonny? How has drug addiction defined their relationship? Look at page 24. What does the narrator mean when he says, it might be said perhaps that I escaped after all? Do you agree or disagree or is it somewhere in the middle? Do you feel the narrator and Sonny are closer at the end when the narrator watches and listens to Sonny play? Look closely at pages 44 through 48. You, you know, think of some other aspects too. How is music and the piano important to Sonny? That could be a great topic. We don't know, you know, I think the ending of Sonny's Blues is one of the most rapturous endings in literature. However, we don't know how it's ultimately going to play out. Sonny has a couple different paths he could take. He could stay clean and, and go on the path of music, which he's obviously some type of musical savant or genius. Or he could fall down and, and, and start using again. But, but the only chance he has is really, remember there's those scenes, Sonny was at the piano playing for his life. He put in the work, and he's obviously an extremely talented uh, musician. And the piano also brings the brothers closer at the end. Remember, the narrator doesn't even care for jazz, but listening to Sonny play, he's able to see all those things. So this could be a really good topic, too. And again, one or two. Edward P. Jones is the first day. Uh, describe the relationship between the mother and daughter. Why is education so important to the mother? Remember, the mother can't read or write. How is social class represented in the story? What do you believe the American dream means to the mother? The, the, the first day is kind of different. Remember the narrator in Sonny's Blues, he teaches math at a high school, but he's not happy. You know, has he escaped? Yes, no. He still lives in the same place. He's educated, but he's not happy. On the flip side, Edward P. Jones is the first day. The mother's American dream is getting her daughter an education. It's still, and, and in many ways, despite the fact that this thing's a complicated, false mess, you know, we all believe in education as one of the few forms of upward mobility. That's what the mother sees, right? If she gets her daughter educated, that's one path away from a, from a, a life of work and struggle like she does. What's the daughter learning about her mother? The mother is willing to risk absolute shame to ensure her daughter gets to school. You know, I can't read or write, will you help me? Uh, Walker's The Flowers. Compare and contrast Myop's life, thoughts, experience, and feel feelings before and after 12 o'clock, roughly the middle of the story. How does her environment change? Why are flowers significant to both Myop and the story? How is racism at work in the story? How do we, the readers, know this, but Myop at the present time does not? Remember, Myop, it all doesn't click for She knows something bad happened, but it all doesn't click for her, right? Uh, here's an example of a meal paragraph, what I'm talking about. One of Nia's biggest struggles is accepting, and this, would be, this is a body paragraph here. This could be like a body... This isn't the introduction. This is a body paragraph. One of Nia's biggest struggles is accepting who Sorty dates and marries. Remember, because Nia thinks that Sorty deserves the world. She deserves so much more than like Duke and then Che, right? This acceptance is difficult because Nia thinks that Sorty deserves more. See, I have a main idea topic sentence. And sometimes I include another sentence that helps sets it up. And then I move into my quote. You always want to, you never want to leave a quote by itself. You always want to lead into it. Nia describes Sordi as beautiful, really beautiful. Looking at Sordi, I could pretend I was beautiful too. And there you have the quotation marks and the parenthetical period goes on the outside. Last name, page number. However, and then you want to follow the quote with analysis. However, Sordi's first boyfriend, Duke, is a funny looking white kid. So I have a couple quotes here. Remember Duke, uh, skinny as a stock of bamboo. And to Nia's horror, 
Sori ends up marrying Mr. Che, who has a hangdog face and his suit like a salesman, with his hair combed over the bald spot in the middle of his head. So I have a couple different quotes here. And here I'm analyzing the quotes. Nia sees these guys as unworthy of Sorty's love and beauty. To Nia, Sorty deserves much more than what either can offer, even if what Che has to offer is a life free of working all the time. Nia sees Sorty, married with babies at 20 years old, as giving up, living the life of an old woman. You, and, and I include this quote here because I love this quote. For your paper, if you just include one quote in the evidence after the main idea topic, that's cool. One quote's fine. I love this quote here, though. You sound like an old lady. You're only 20 for Christ's sake. You don't have to live like this. Ma is wrong. You can be anything, Sorty. Nia believes in Sorty so much there. Not only does Nia want to save Sorty from these inferior guys, but she also wants to save Sorty from a life of a different kind of work, being a full-time mom and housewife and not putting herself first. So this would be a meal paragraph. Uh, you know, for your paper, if you're doing a Sorty thing, jump right into it, intro, jump right in. And Maylee Chase saving Sorty. May leeches saving sorty Nia wants to save her older sister for a variety of different reasons. And you know, Nia attempts you would include include for your intro right and you're going to double space this whole thing you're going to go to double space you're going to indent each paragraph you know right here include two to three reasons and maybe the three times she tries to save her And then you have your thesis at the bottom, right? Why, you know? Your intro is gonna be about a quarter page, half page. So you can start mapping out your paper, right? First body. If you're looking at the times Nia tries to save Sorty, you could, you know, do you all remember the first time? The restaurant, right? The restaurant scene when Nia stabs that that hillbilly for grabbing sorty and your whole first body paragraph just is just going to be about the restaurant each body paragraph is going to focus on one thing you're not going to jam a bunch of stuff in there so you can look at what happens you know main idea first time nia tries to save sorties when she stabs a guy in a restaurant and then you're going to include a quote and then analyze that quote and then it turns out a hell of a lot differently than what Nia thinks, right? Nia thinks that Ma and Sorty are going to come. And, and that shows her, you know, that it's not all as cracked up to be. It's not like the movies. Remember that one part in a movie it would unfold this way. In, in the cliche movies, the good guys always win. The bad guys always lose. That ain't, that's not so in life. Second body. You could look at Duke and the field. Right. Remember when Sorty freaks out and no one knows why Nia doesn't even realize why. And Duke doesn't realize why. But Nia's like, you know, we're city girls. We're not used to this hick stuff. But after you do Duke in the field, you know, you would you would definitely include that moment. Once upon a time, Sorty, you know, that Sorty carried me on her back. That's why Sorty freaks out. You know, what else begins once upon a time? I think I say that in a video. This is like the anti-fairy tale. So second body, Duke in the field. This might be the third body, how you tie it together. With why that moment's so important. Fourth body, when she goes to try and bust out Che. Che's house and beautiful Des Moines, Iowa, right? And then you can, ha you know, what happens? Nia wants to save Sorty from Che. 
And it's funny, Che's not doing anything. Like, he's not, it's just this mundane life. Like, Sorty deserves so much more than what Che, che is and has to offer. And then if you want to include a fifth or conclusion, there's your paper, right? That's all you do. Follow meal. That'll easily be your paper. You can do this with go back to any of the questions, choose one or two, describe the relationship between Sonny and the narrator, and then why does, you know, you could do the same thing and then map out your paper. The first paragraph. You know, the brothers are polar opposites. Sonny's like a dreamer. He, he's a musician. The narrator's more practical, pragmatic. But also, Sonny's heroin. Why, why aren't they getting along? You know, the heroin addiction. Why does the narrator feel responsible for Sonny? The, he made, you know, the promise to his mother. Uh, all those things. You could do that with any of these. You know, take a question or two and start to outline it. You know, this is what you should definitely do before you, uh, you should outline your paper. I mean, I can't emphasize that enough because you don't want to wait until next week and you're staring at the blank page. So those are a few notes on paper one. Please email me if you want to talk over Zoom and we could discuss it further.